Welcome. It is August 5th, Wednesday, and this is our third installment. And you are halfway through the course. So now we're on to topic three of integrating iPads into the elementary music classroom. I hope that you have been um, enjoying the last two webinars and that you find this one um, uh, pertinent or useful to your classroom and your situation. I am Amy Burns, if you have forgotten, and I'm a pre-K through third grade music teacher, fifth grade uh, instrument class, fourth through eighth grade band teacher. I work in Far Hills Country Day School at Far Hills Country Day School in Far Hills, New Jersey. I'm beginning my 19th year there and um, excited to go back in about a month. So I'm still happy to be on vacation, but excited to go back in a month this week. I am still in New Jersey, but the fourth installment will come to you from North Carolina. So it's kind of exciting to be uh, holding a webinar in a variety of different places. And I am a proud mom of two girls, and I also play flute, clarinets, piano, and saxophone. Those are my four major instruments, along with learning all the other instruments. Okay, so our topic three is about assessment and ear training tools and recording tools and recorder tools. So today's class should be able to, you should be able to find one app today that you will probably want to pursue in evaluating because I'm, I'm running the gamut today. If you teach recorders, you might like the recorder apps I'm going to show you. If you um, are in, you really want some ear training apps, you might like the ones I show you today. And then these other assessment apps I'm using today are about musical creation, but they're not using GarageBand. They're using some different other types of tools um, that run a variety of ages. So I really hope that you enjoy this webinar today. My first question coming off of reading from the book. And I hope you are following along in the book because Help, I'm an elementary music teacher with What Are More iPads is a free download. And it's a great place to look for the apps, but the chapters are just as good because you never know what the situation you're going to be in. And I cover all situations. I think I cover all situations. I'll say I cover most situations just to cover myself. <laughs> but if you're teaching... Um, in a one iPad classroom, how can apps be used to assess? So let's say you're using Note Squish or Flash Note Derby. In a one iPad classroom, you can mirror it using something like Reflector or, um, let me get my highlighter back on, using something like Apple TV. So you can mirror things. Perfect, thank you. Um, and there it is, great. So you can definitely mirror using something like Reflector. You can also mirror um, using Apple TV, as I said, or anything else that goes through AirPlay. And then if you're mirroring, you can pass around the iPad or have the students come up to the iPad if you have it hardwired um, and have them answer one question at a time, one note reading question at a time. You can divide the class into two, ear, two teams, the box versus the Beethovens, and have them come up to the iPad or pass the iPad to each team. Um, I've also seen, I, I watched Dan Beal in New Jersey, and at the end of his class, he threw on Note Squish really quickly, and he held it, he held the iPad, and he said, I need you to call out the answer. And he needed to hear five or more students call out the correct answer. If they called out an incorrect answer, he wouldn't actually tap it. He waited till a correct answer was given. It had to be by five or more students. If they started shouting out because they get really excited in his class, they love his class, if they started shouting out, he stopped the game and he, he turned off the app. So after one time of doing that, he's never had that issue again. Again, it's that classroom management of consistently following the rules that you're setting. So with one iPad in the classroom, as long as it's being projected, it's good, that's going to help if you have a classroom of 20 plus kids, you can make it work. 
What about if you have a few iPads? A few iPads, this is what I have. So I group the students and each in the group take a turn with Note Squish or Flash Note Derby. And I also use Reflector again, which is right there. I use the Reflector app and have it mirror onto my screen, my smart board. And so the students are doing the work in the groups, but all five iPads are mirrored up to the, to the smart board. And I can sit there and watch how they're doing. I look at the a student, I'm using iDocio, and I look at the final score and record it right there in iDocio. Um, I've also had students who in the group are getting bored because one student's having their, his or her turn. So the other students go up to the smart board and start tapping the answers. And this is really good because once you have the iPad mirrored onto the smart board, the smart board's no longer interactive. So they could sit there and tap the note squish note or the flash note derby note and it didn't affect the game because the smart board's now no longer interactive. So it was great. They would sit there and uh, test themselves. They weren't disturbing the student who was on the iPad and they made it work very well. And that's a few iPads. What about one-on-one? -on -one? If you're in a one-on-one -on -one classroom where this, all the students have an iPad, then you can assess with headphones. If let's say you're doing Note Squish and, and, and Flash Note Derby, use headphones, you're going to need it. Um, if headphones aren't allowed in, in your school due to lice outbreaks, because that does tend to happen, especially in elementary, you're going to have to try and separate the students around the room. And again, have them just keep their own score, have a tally sheet next to them walk around with your iDocio, but sometimes having them tally is easier because if you have 25 students all with their own iPads, all do, working at the same time, it's going to be hard for you to run around and record everything. So have them tally up everything for you. So you can assess in all three situations. It is possible and it's really very effective. As we continue into topic three, don't forget about the SAMR model that I'm constantly referencing. But one of the things I added, and I think I did this last week as well, is experimentation. If you looked in my book about um, how to test two apps, and I use Note Squish and Flash Note Derby, how to test them, experiment with them, go through them, use them, and then decide, okay, you know what, instead of flashcards or drilling them, I am going to substitute note reading with flash note derby. It's going to happen at the end of my unit. I'm just using it to drill them, but instead of drilling them with flashcards, I'm going to drill them with flash note derby. I tried both note squish and flash note derby, but I like flash note derby better because it let me just use C, D, E, G, A. I didn't have to include F. So it, that's, that's the method I use in the book. You definitely need to want to look through the book to see that. And um, that's what I'm constantly referencing in here, the SAMR model and then experimenting, starting with the experimentation. I actually call this eSAMR sometimes and get that experimentation in first. So today we're going to be starting with ear training apps. Yay, ear training apps. So ear training apps are going to be apps that are really focusing on the students' listening skills and matching pitch. So today we're going to start with Blob Chorus. Now if you don't know Blob Chorus, you might have seen this, my little blobs here, and here they come up. Blah, 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 blah. All right, this is just fun for you to work yourself with, but it is great for your students blah, too. Blah, blah. Thank you. Now, if you go into the options, you can go from two blobs all the way up to eight blobs. I'll, I'll tell you right now, the blobs are very chromatic, and it makes this app a little deterrent. Like, you don't want to use this app due to how chromatic they are. But then in my last class I taught in Connecticut a few weeks ago, one of the students there came up with a brilliant idea that makes this app amazing now. Put yourself at two blobs, okay? Blob, blob, blob. So they need to match King Blob. 
I wish King Blob sang first, but you can ask to hear the blobs again. Blob, blob, blob. So you are to match the pitch. Blob, 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 nice job. Blob. Get a point. Get a point because you also got the answer right. That's cool. Next. Blob, blob, blob. Very chromatic. Da, da, da. So let's say we get it wrong. The students love this. The blob explodes. So now you have to press the right answer to go on. Blob, 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 blob. And you only get one point. So instead of getting two points, you're just getting one point. Now, how can you use this with students? One iPad in a classroom. One iPad in a classroom, you can have, pass it around, you can divide it into two teams, you can do the, uh, you know, more than five students need to answer it um, and give me the correct answer, I only do correct, but you're going to have students, if you're doing a few iPads or one-on-one -on -one iPads, they're going to want the blob to explode. So you can actually say, blob, blob, blob. There, you have a class that only wants to have the blob explode, say, then find the pitch that does not match King Blob. Blob. And they'll press that first. And then they'll press the correct Blob. one. Blob. So Blob. for you, Blob. for you, you're still assessing them. You're just asking them to give the wrong answer. They still have to know which one's wrong and which one's right to assess them on the wrong answer. This is a great way to use Blob Choir. Have it only set to two blobs. And if they love exploding blobs, tell them, then I want to see the blob explode. So you have to give the wrong answer. It can't match King Blob. They're still, you're still getting them to listen correctly to do that. And that's pretty cool. Um, you can try to do more. And I'm telling you, challenge yourself on eight. I wouldn't even challenge your students on eight. This is Blob Choir. Pretty fun one for your students. Let's see. The next one is Do Re Mi One Two Three. Do Re Mi One Two Three comes in a light version. Blob Chorus is a paid app, but Do Re Mi One Two Three Light is free. Hi, I'm Do. Welcome to Do Re Mi One Two Three. I have the light version. You can pay to get the full version. When you have the light version, press the rainbow button to make your things own. are grayed out. Or pick a song to play. So we're going to press the rainbow. Great. Where should we go? Doesn't really give you any other choice because it's a light Rock version. And river. Who should we sing with? It only gives you two choices because the others are grayed out. The chimes on the star. And let's make some music. <laughs> I'm actually going to go to the panda because the students love the panda because he does that. Let's make some All right. music. Touch someone to hear a note. So when he's in the panda, they love that. The students love that. But you can colors. guess what you have here. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, white. These are the colors of your boom whackers, except for right up here, which would be red again. Here's the color of your boom whackers. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And then the C. Yes, it is Do is C on this. Fixed Do, C. But those are your boom whacker colors. So you can put this up on the screen, one iPad in a classroom, and use this to help teach a boom whacker ostinato. Let's go one even better. You have numbers. You're told to be using numbers in your classroom. Well, here they can sing the numbers. Five, three, four, two, two, one, two, three, four, five. But let's, oh. Five. They love that too. It can go right off the screen. Now do you have, re, you have do, re, me. Try recording your own song. So you can actually do warm ups. Have a student come up to the iPad, one iPad in a classroom, and have them warm up your singers. Give me a four-note warm-up using um, pentatonic do re mi so la. Okay, start on me. All right. Mi so la so. Here we sing it. Mi so la so. Look, 
What's yeah. over there? Yeah, I still want to get you on that. You can also record. Recording. When you're done, press the red button have them again to stop. Have your one-on-one -on -one classroom create something that they record and then sing back. Me, Ray, do, so, la, ti, do. <laughs> Press the play button to hear your song. Me, Ray, Do, Sol, La, Ti, Do. It doesn't record the uh, sound effects, but it records the song that they created. Try touching two at a time. Sol, 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 Think about this. This is a great warm-up tool and one iPad in a classroom. You, in more than one, like a few iPads or one-on-one, -on -one, they can actually record their own little solfege song, learn it, and then sing it back to the kids, the other students in the class. I love this. That's free. That's the light version. The um, paid version, which the grad students at CC SU had and they loved, gave you a lot more options to characters and themes and things like that. Nice app, though. So the first recorder app that my students really loved was this one right here, which was like Angry Birds for the recorder. It was Joytunes recorder app. Unfortunately, it left the iTunes store, and they're hoping to get it back onto the iTunes store. But it has left the iTunes store. So since it left the iTunes store, they do have a website that you can use it. And it's joytunes.com forward slash master class. Click the one time pass and you don't even have to register. Your cookies will remember everything you did. You do need to use your microphone, so click cl connect and then click allow. I'm going to skip the little beginning here. Okay. So we're going to just go with the first one. This is like Angry Birds for the recorder. Welcome to the game. I just want My microphone works. Watch what you do. So what you want them to do is play softly. What a great game to teach them to play softly because what is no good. You saw what it did to my score. That's so nice. So this is great. It will allow you to go on. The students love this game. My third graders love this. It's between Staff Wars and this that they love the most. As you get um, more on into this game, now you're going to try to get the birds, and you're trying to get them right there at the bullseye. Not too early, not too late. If you're too late, he lays an egg on you. comes out. <laughs> they over blew. He wouldn't do that. This game really taught my students not to over blow because it was a fun way to teach them. It continues on, eventually teaches you how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb. So it goes B, A, and G, and it will add more notes. As an app, it's not available now. They're trying to fix the app. 
But the other ones are Mr. Noteworthy here, Recorder Free or Recorder. And these apps, this one's free here. And I've had the students use this one, Play Along Recorder. And it's the same thing as the other one, the Recorder Free one, because Hi, this is Mr. Noteworthy. If you go into this app here, Recorder Free, that Mr. Noteworthy explains a lot more about the recorder. This one is just the songs. And I've had my students do this. I kept them on easy and would use this to help them. I had to mute it because Joy Tunes over here, <laughs> Joy Tunes was trying to uh, play at me. So I got everything really nice. That's cool. If you hit email, what I had done on this is I wrote on my board, my I made a Gmail account that was fhcdsmusicteacher at gmail.com. They put that in. Um, and so I would turn off all my other mail apps so it would be to and from. It would be to fhcds and it would be from the FHCDS Music Teacher. Right now, because it's summer, I have all my mail apps on. And they would mail this to me. As you can see, it has their entire score in it. Um, and they would mail it to me. And usually what I did was um, ask them to just put their name in the subject. And they knew how to do that. And so this got mailed to me. They were doing this during class. And they would mail it to me, which I loved. I loved that so much. And I would have it at the end of the day, after I put my girls to bed, I'd come back and I'd uh, see their scores. And I loved it. And for this is nice because for my harder students, they didn't have to start. So now chromatic scale is not easy, and I told them that. But they could go on to um, using more of the intermediate if they were more advanced players. So this app was very nice. The downplay to this is if you don't have earphones, then they are they start picking up the other students playing in the classroom. So if you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation, this is a nice app for you, and you can put the earphones on. Another great one is Denise Gagne. It's you know, music play, Denise Gagne, um, learn and play recorder. And she does such a nice job with her app. And I think she now has a light version where it's not the entire app, and then she has this app for $3.99. So she gives you, um, I think she gives you a light version for cheaper or even free, and then this app for $3.99. And it's very nice. All the recordings are in there, and they play along, and she does this great little tutorial about the recorder, and she narrates everything. It's fabulous. Uh, that's a great app by Denise. So those are some recorder app options. If you teach recorder, that's a really nice thing to know. Now we're going to go into some apps for creating, recording, and looping. Why looping apps? Because you can create music, enhance performing ensemble playing. Also, it's a great visual for teaching, and I'm going to show you what I used it to help teach. Why creation apps? I'm going to be talking about some creation apps. They're not music creation. They're not actually based musically. These are apps that are, might be on your iPad because classroom teachers are using it. And i got to tell you, you can use these for assessment beautifully. Um, and why recording apps? Oh, why not? I mean, recording is a great way to assess. It's a great way to listen. It's a great way for your students to hear themselves and assess themselves and see if they're, they're hitting all the goals that they set for themselves or that you have set for them. So let's start up. I'm going to start with one of the most popular looping apps besides GarageBand, which we've already done, and that is Loopy. I'm going to show you one of my favorite videos of Loopy. Um, two celebrities using Loopy. You're the best. Uh, you're one of my all-time favorites. I just even to get to talk to you, I get a little nervous. Uh, but uh, uh, to sing with you is the craziest thing. And so I came up with an idea where maybe I could sing with you. See if you want to do this. Sure. Now. Okay, good. So this is what I have. The, I have this iPad app. Okay, it's it's called a Looper. It's actually and what Loopy. It, does is it loops you. Notice how the metronome is playing, and it's also lighting up. Okay, 
that's going to loop that. They have nice microphones hooked into it. Ah, uh, so awesome. I mean, there's more than just these two using Loopy. I think he's done this with several different celebrities. Definitely YouTube it and see the rest of that. Love him. So, I use this in my classroom, Ghost of John. Have you seen the ghost of John? Long white bones with the skin all gone. Wouldn't it be chilly with no skin on? This is Loopy. It's already loaded the students on this one. So I set it, and you can set it in the settings. I set this for um, 12 loops. Have you seen the ghost of John? Long white bones with the skin all gone. So this was a great way for them to actually see a round I added them to do. After they could visually see this round and put it together, then we, there we go, we added a little bit of beatboxing. If one was a little off, you could use two fingers to try and get that back on. Here we go. Now, if someone is too loud, all you have to do is bring your finger to the left. Yeah, that's your volume. Yes, those are my second graders, so you can imagine there. But they created their own little beatboxing speech ostinato with a background accompaniment to the ghost of John. All right, so now I'm going to show you how this loopy works. You can use this more, it's a learning curve. You have to work with it to get it to work right. So we're going to start a new session, Recite. So when you start, you need to start with a metronome, some sort of beat. I like to tap mine. There we go. Good. Now I want the metronome to play, and I'm just going to be using the drum today. If you notice, when you get to this page here, it looks very mathematical. This page is telling you that right now your loops are four beats. If I want them eight beats, I double that. If you double it again, now it's 16 beats. Okay, And you can play with this. It's going to be helpful to know that because you don't always want your loops to have the same thing. Your beatboxing might only be four beats, but your melody might be 16. And here's what I'm showing you. So I'm going to create a little beatboxing tune here that you might recognize. Okay, I'm going to mute it. Cool. If I didn't do it right, I would just scroll to the right and I can re-record, clear it, or just cancel this whole menu. This whole menu. All right, so I got that for the next circle. It's going to be four beats as well. Now notice I'm practicing first. 
You have to wait, as Jimmy said, till the orange circle comes up. Spoon, 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 If one is too loud and we want to balance it, that's scrolling to the left. Okay, like that. Oh, I accidentally hit that, so I do want to clear that. Cool. And tap, tap. My middle finger must have tapped that other one. Now we're going to add another one, still just four beats, and it's going to finish my little beatboxing here. Bring that one down a little bit. Now I'm going to merge them. I want to merge all three. So to merge all three, I have to make sure first in my settings that in my track management, the clear after merge is on. It is. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move it right up. See how it merged? And merge. Now listen. All right, so there we go. We got the beatboxing all in one circle. That's all I wanted there. And I want one more. Now with earphones, this is so much better because then you won't have the background boom, chick, chick, chick coming in. Ooh. Okay. We're going to add them all together. Okay. Now my next one, I ran times it. This is going to be eight beats per measure. So you have to look. You want to make sure it starts on the top so they all meet together on that first downbeat. So this one is going to have a different note. them together. Good. Okay, that's good. Here comes the next one. This one, I'm going to actually double it again. The way you make me feel. There we go. Now, I'm going to do one more thing. In the settings, in that track management, I am going to turn off clear after merge. And I'm going to, uh, no, nope. <laughs> I'm going to copy this. There we go. So I copied it, and the reason I copied it is for this reason. Hold down the middle, and now I'm going to pan it. This one will pan to the left, hold down the middle, now I'm going to pan it. This is going to pan to the right. All right. Now it's time to record. I'm going to record the melody on top of this. So in order to do that, go back, press record. Once I press record, it's starting. I'm going to keep the drum going. Hey baby, baby with the high heels on My loveliness is yours So what you, I was doing there was turning them on when I need them on All the walls around We'll paint the car and we'll turn around the now But then you make me feel yeah, so that's how I did that. And now that I'm done, once I'm done, it's over. That's the recording. Go over into the recordings and it's there. And if you hit play, it will play back what you just did. How do you get this recording out of there? Well, in order to get the recording out, go into recordings. There it is. 
Press it. There we go. Thank you. You just have to press it and I email it. Okay, so I would email it to myself. It will prepare the audio and then I can just email it to myself. And it comes in, I think, as an M4A file. You could copy it, you could plug USB into it and transfer it, or if you have a SoundCloud account, you could put it into SoundCloud. Really, really amazing app. You just have to work with it to get used to it. And for me, that inspiration came from when I watched Katie Wardrobe do it in Australia at a conference I was um, a keynote, and she got it from her. Now, she's not using Loopy. She's using hardware to do this, but I just showed you, you could do Loopy to do things this cool. Think of your older kids who could do this. You can do it, it just takes practice. If you want a very simple wave editor, you do this one, Pocket Wave Pad. Great little editor. You can sit here and just do recording assessments. It all comes in as recording. And what you can do is you can just email it right there and send it to yourself as an email. And then you can post it up on a website. You can do whatever you need with it. And here's an example from Pocket Wave Pad. I can help you in the so that was Sarah, my Sarah, when she was two, and she was singing that song nonstop, and I just had to record it. And I chose Pocket Wave Pad because it was just right there on my iPad. I just clicked on it, and off I went with it. Um, but I also want to show you some apps that you can actually record into. You might not think of them as that. Here's one. If you have, <laughs> if you have a um. <laughs> Young class, young age class. This app, which is like $1.99, is great because you can do the following with this. Two things. You're listening to it right now. First of all, you can do it in a bunch of different languages. French, Spanish, Italian, German, or you. So you can actually record each verse with a different student and totally assess them this way. So I think that's kind of a really cool way inside an app to turn it into an assessment app. Here's another one. Little Fox Music uh, box has songs in it that students would know. Let's say London Bridge. And it actually has a karaoke element to it and a recording element to it. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Okay, that was me. And it's actually there. And yep, I can email it to myself. There we go comes in as an M4A. You have another little assessment along with this little karaoke so you're showing reading in your classroom because they have to read in order to sing that. I mean they'll memorize it as well but they're following and reading along. And it's just another little element inside an app to make it work like an assessment tool. And so let's talk about another app. These are creation apps. They These creation apps might be on your iPad because classroom teachers are using them. But oh my goodness, how great would it be for you to use them as well for assessment tools? I'm going to start with Explain Everything. In Explain Everything, I created the following assessment for my kindergartners. So my kindergartners know this song. To show you like your special friends, just give them each a heart. H-E-A-R-T, H-E-A-R-T, 
H E A R T, each heart says I like you, or I love you, depending on your class. I actually have a file, um, a notebook file for Smartboard, where this would turn around and um, reveal a quarter note. So they started to learn the rhythms. But with this app, Explain Everything, what I did was I started with a blank screen. This is before they came in. And what I needed was a cartoon heart. So I went to find one. And I went over to Google Chrome, my Chrome web browser, and I typed in a search for cartoon heart. It has some images. I just tap and hold and I save the image. It's hard to see. I save the image to the photo roll. So now that when I'm in explain everything, I go to the plus with the square and I go into existing photo and there it is. I select it. I can resize it here click done, put it here. I need it five to H-E-A-R-T. I need it five times. I already have one, so I need four more. So I'm going to duplicate it. I hit the I with the little box around it, click on it, and duplicate, 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 duplicate. Done. There they all are. They wanted the white background because this one had a white background. Then this was set up on the screen. Then I told the, I grouped the kindergartners because I had five iPads, and I said, you are to use the drawing tool to figure out the rhythm of this song. We've been clapping it. You already saw it on the notebook file. Let's see if you remember it. Then I would click record. Now it's recording everything I say and do. So it recorded them trying to figure it out. And let's listen to what happened. You three, go ahead. The pen is there. Work together. Okay, okay we got Mrs. Burns. I get to make this one. Me, me. I get to make the second one. I'll get the third one. Okay, you go first. Wait, that's backwards. That's backwards. So what's the racer? Where's the racer? Right there. Probably. Yeah. It's my turn. Okay. We have to do it on the right side. And Luca. Yeah, that's good. It's okay. It's backwards. I don't mind. Doesn't mind. Last one. We're done. Tool. A very good little tool for assessment. It also can do bouncy music. So I'm going to do a new one there. Nope. Like bouncy ball music was what I meant. Follow the lyrics. So I'm going to start another one. And this one, I saved the lyrics. This is for a song by Jim Papoulis called Give Us Hope. And I saved the lyrics as a photo. So I'm going to find it here. Okay. Perfect. Because I want the lyrics to fit on the screen. So how do you do that? Um, I just took a picture of it. I searched out the lyrics and took a picture of it just by holding the menu and the on-off switch, the menu button and the on-off switch, and it worked perfect. So then I click Done, and it's there. I can make that a little bit bigger. Okay. I need the audio file, so I emailed it to myself. So I'm going to go into my mail, and there it is. I'm going to click and hold on that audio file. When I do this, okay, it's going to ask me, what do you want to open it in? And explain everything. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this, okay? I'm going to hit the record button. <laughs> and I'm going to hit play. Okay. Watch. Okay, 
stop the recording there, but look, watch now up here and you'll see the bouncy ball. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And you can export these. You can export them um, to the movie roll. You can put them right up to uh, YouTube. You can put them in your Dropbox folder. So there's a great way to get these off of your iPad. Explain Everything is $2.99. It's very similar to Edu Creations, which is free in Screen Chomp. But with Edu Creations, you have to actually log into Edu Creations. You have to share it up on their site. For $2.99, Explain Everything just lets you figure out what you want to do with it and gives you options to how to get it off. So that's worth the $3. This is a great, sorry about that, that is a great app. Explain Everything, just for those two things alone. The next one I'm going to show you is Book Creator. My students love to create books. Creating books is an wonderful way to reinforce and assess. With Book Creator, I remind the students that really we use it at the end. I'm going to use a landscape book because they'll probably read this on an iPad. This is usually at the end of a unit and what it does is it allows the students to take things that they learned and make a book out of it. So it's very exciting for them. So what you saw I was doing was like Beethoven there. So you can hit the plus button and add text, and you can actually speak it in if your students do not have the ability to type, or you could type it in, Beethoven's childhood. Now remember, if they can't type, they can speak it. All right. Now using the eye, because that's highlighted, I can make that much bigger, okay? I can bold it, I can change the font on it. I can change the background color, mm, not so much. <laughs> I can add a shadow to it and I can align it. There we go. Not nice. Just like with your pictures, you can just tilt it a little bit. What if you want to change the background of the whole cover? Because this is the cover. That's, you can do that again in the eyes. What if you want to add a sound file for just this page? Plus, add sound. You can record, or what I do is set up a playlist in my iTunes library for my students to find Beethoven's music. And it comes in, and a lot of my students will draw, using the draw tool, a little arrow. And again, they can do things with that until I make that smaller and do that. And they might, again, type something like click here. But that time, it's highlighted. I Let's bring this totally down. I don't want that background this time. Let's make it blue, just like the page. Hmm. Shadow it again. Click here. Rather make that more blue like the page, which I could take time to do and, and fix that. They want a picture. They go to the photos and they can um, take a picture of it. Using the camera, they could take a picture or a video. Or using photos, I will set up Beethoven's folder there and they can add Beethoven. Of course, it's his childhood. They should add something a little bit more that looks like his childhood. Now, let's say you don't want this piece just here. You want it to play the entire time. So let's delete this. I delete. Okay. 
delete, delete. Now remember, if you make a simple mistake, you always have an undo button there. So instead, we're going to go into the eye this time and go to Soundtrack Enabled. What track? Choose it. Go to my playlist. That one. Do you want to apply your soundtrack to every page? Yes. Now it's actually there. So we could go to page two. We can do this to go to page two. And once we've done this and everything's done, we can export this. Now, the simplest way to export this is open it up in iBooks. I showed you Seesaw. You could go put this in their student work in Seesaw. That's very cool. You can open it up in Drive. So it goes to the Drive, um, it goes to your Google Drive, and then you can share it. Now, you want your parents to see this. Like, I could open it in iBooks, but I'm opening it in my iBooks, in my account. So that's hard to share with other parents. I mean, it's going to show up here. There it is. There's the cover. However, this is not really a great way to share with other, um, with your parents. So I tend to do this, put it back in my books, change this, you can title it Beethoven's Childhood. Me. So you can do that. Okay, cool. Done. Now, what I can do with this is share it. And usually what I do is export it as a video. And the reason I export it as a That's video, I want to just save video, I'll save it right to the iPad. The reason I'll do that, or I'll put it in Google Drive, or I'll save it to the iPad and connect my iPad. I do that so that when I need, I'm going to show you right now, when I want to share it with parents, I can just put it in a Google Drive folder that they can access. I can put it again on the website like this. So I'm going to show you here of what they did. Here's one second grade um, book creator using book creator for Beethoven. This is what they learned about Beethoven. Now remember, they are second graders. The life of Beethoven. Beethoven's childhood was very hard for him because his father made him practice the violin day and night. So this is nice. They recorded themselves saying what's on the page, and it goes on to, to talk about his child more about what he, they learned from his childhood. I also have third graders, and you can't see their faces because I try to keep the faces out, and they're they're told that. Third graders were using Book Creator to make a recorder book for next year's third graders. There's a rubric they had to um, hit. They had to hit the guidelines of a picture, audio recording, text, because it was being published in was third grade. It had to have um, it had to have periods at the end of the sentence. It had to um, start with a capital letter. It had to include a video. They told me one more click. <laughs> I said thank you. So I have. I love using Book Creator. Um, the other thing I've seen Book Creator, and this is not even my project. This was my daughter's project. Um, they put the playbill of my kindergartner's play here, right here. This way. And there she is, and it's she talks about. I 
chose to play the mouse because they are cute and you can find them in your basement. So she recorded Michaela saying it and a picture of her. And um, she wrote that, and then she had to read it, and it was fabulous, and she shared this with all the kindergarten parents. I mean, how great is that? So Book Creator is a wonderful app that you probably wouldn't think for, mu for music, but it's great. You can make pitch maps. You can just use the drawing tool and then record the actual map. Think about that. It's, that's, that's a really wonderful app. Again, it's Book Creator. Book Creator is free for one book. We can make one book with the free app. It's $4.99 um, so that you can create, you know, numerous books. So I, I would say it's worth the $5. A couple of other ones that you might see. Telegami. My third graders were using this for their 50 state uh, fair Adventure America reports. But what I love about telegamis, you can actually have them create a gami, you know, and this is great if you have a one-on-one -on -one classroom, right? You could do this all together. And what I do is I have them take, not yet, I have them go into the background and take the doodle and they have to create a rhythm in four counts. Okay, perfect. Then they're going to go back into that message. Okay. And they're going to record themselves saying it and clapping it. Ta, 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 rest. Ta, 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 rest. They love watching their gummy, and they get to dress their gummy up, and they love watching their gummy kind of try to interpret what a clap sounds like. And um, yeah, this is wonderful. It kind of is a fun way to get them to assess writing a rhythm and performing it. And of course, you can share it. Isn't that wonderful? Again, you can email this. I can totally email my gummy, you know, and I, I create that email address, FHCDS Music Teacher, and they can email it right to me. Usually, I just ask them to put their name in the subject, and there it is. Check out my gummy, and it sets up that um, website, and you can just go and see it and listen to it. So that's Telegami. That one's free as well, but with um, the paid app, you can do more. Sock Puppets is another one that I believe is free. And then with the paid app, you get a lot more. And this is the paid app. So first thing I have to do in, in um, Sock Puppet is I have to check out the Sock Puppets. They are default so that um, they speak, some speak normal and some don't. I want them all to speak at the normal pitch because if they don't, you're not assessing their pitch accurately. So I want them all normal. That's what I want. So I adjust them to all be normal. Okay. And then we go new, and the, 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 I can put four right on the iPad. We're going to be on stage, and they must use some stage things for that would look great. So here's their little microphone here, and see we have these nice little backgrounds, makes it look very musical. What's going to happen, so you can see the arrow moves around. So when the arrow moves around, they can, they will be singing, and they're going to have a conversation using solfege. So me, me. So me, me. So, so me, me. Do, re, do. Keep your socks on. So me me. So me me. So so me me. Do re do. She's in the wrong pitch. I would have to fix that one on hers. But you can see this is fun for them. You can save this. Um, we'll call the test. You can save that, and again. You can find your songs that you saved. 
There's my sew me law, my test, and things like that. And it'll come back up. So you can save them on your iPad, check them later. Um, and if they do it well, if they show it to you and they've done it well, then yeah, let them go back into the settings. And oh, there's your share. Sorry, you can share this in your photos, put it in YouTube. You can go back into the settings. That's the settings of that. In your home button. And there, you, you can allow them this time to do whatever they want. And they'll have a blast. But have them do the first one correctly. And that's sock puppets. The last one I want to show you is a Rasma. Now, a Rasma is an augmented reality. It's like taking QR codes one more level. So I'm going to show you. My Rasma is on right now. It wants me to trick, find a trigger item. Respect. But what would happen is a video of me would show up playing this. Now with the Rasma, it's very simple. It's three steps to create that up. You create an account and you take, um, what you do first is you take a video and then you take a picture of the trigger and like this is the trigger and the video is me playing. And now every time your iPads sh um, click on a Rasma and that little balls go jumping, it will trigger this. So I've seen this used on back to school night, and I've seen this used um, at a play, like so that they get instead of the playbill, they they use this, and they walked up to the poster of each student, and the video, would, like the picture of the kid, like Michaela as the mouse, well, video would pop up when I stuck a Rasma up to it, and she would come out of the video and tell me what she was. I mean, it's 3D. It's a 3D bulletin board. It's amazing. But in order to make a Rasma work correctly, you really have to set up your own account. You have to invite people to follow your account. So you set up, what I do is set up a private channel in a Rasma, um, Mrs. Burns Music Room, then I invite the parents through an email they set up that says, follow my music room. And when they do, then they can access any of my auras from any of their mobile devices. So it's pretty cool. Very cutting edge. So what were we talking about in regards to assessment? Look at all these assessment apps we've been using already that I showed in the last two webinars. Look at all these so the last thing I want to remind you here is in our course on our um, website, we're up to topic three. I went through all of these today. Uh, you want to review this video. You want to do the app evaluations. Look at some of the others that others have been writing about. There's the app evaluation. If you're doing this for credit, don't forget that the lesson plan is due um, in August. And the lesson plan, um, you can find that here. Sunday, August 16th is due. And the lesson plan is a lesson you are using one of the iPad apps as a tool, remember not as learning outcome, to help uh, with some item that you have been teaching but you haven't felt successful and you feel like an app is going, this, using the technology tool of an app is going to make this lesson work. It could be something like that. Or it could be just a brand new lesson. You love Note Squish and now you're going to try, a, an, a, let's say you're a Kodai teacher and you're going to use Note Squish as your practice. You've already presented it. Um, and then they, and then you go to the practice portion. So there's a lot of different things you could do your lesson plan on. I can't wait to read it. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or throw it right up on one of the posts. I am checking it daily. It does email me when you do work and when you send it in. So I am doing my best to always try and answer you. I hope you have a wonderful week and you are enjoying the summer. And I will see you next week.